Hey guys, Vlad here with AVT Astro. As I'm sure you can see, it's a beautiful day here in Silver Lake, Washington. And um, I decided to uh, make a little bit of a YouTube video about um, a fairly asked question that I get um, when I'm talking to people, uh, especially like at star parties and uh, when I volunteer at my astronomy club, the Rose City Astronomers. Uh, for those of you not familiar, um, I run a little astro blog called avt-astro.com where I review all kinds of fun astronomy gear um, and just you know post uh, like other astronomy related content. Um, so the question that I get fairly often from from people that are newer into the club is, um, you know, the, they're they're kind of thinking about getting into the hobby and they're not sure whether they should get into. Uh, either visual observing or astrophotography. So I kind of wanted to just touch uh, touch on that topic and just kind of give you my thoughts. Uh, if you know me at all, you know that I'm primarily a visual observer. I've been into astronomy for like the last 20 years or so. Um, I've had over a hundred scopes, uh, so I'm, you know, I feel very privileged to, uh, to have owned uh, that many and just kind of try out a bunch of uh, fun astronomy gear. Um, and that's mostly visual stuff, though astrophotography I'm pretty new at, so um, uh, do consider that, although I do have a pretty good perspective on it as well. Um, so anyhow, if you're thinking about uh, getting into either one or the other and you're kind of not sure, um, there's really a couple of things that I would really consider. Um, the first one, uh, just like with any hobby, is how much money do you have to kind of throw at, you know, at the hobby. Uh, the second thing uh, that I'd really consider is how much time do you have to invest into this. Um, so what do I mean by that? <clears throat> well, let's start with the money aspect. Uh, to get a astrophotography rig that's kind of... Um, you know just a basic setup that'll get you going and I'm and when I say astrophotography I'm talking about deep space astrophotography so taking uh, pictures of like uh, galaxies nebulas stuff like that um, you need a you know pretty decent GEM mount so that's this type of it's a German equatorial mount this style mount um, and then you're going to probably want to start like if you you know like talk to pretty much anybody that's into astrophotography they'll probably recommend starting with the small aperture APO that's an 80 millimeter uh, APO there um, this is a little bit of a higher end setup from your you know just basic introductory type of uh, astrophotography rig um, but to get a setup going like this you know you're looking at a minimum of a, of a thousand bucks to, to kind of get going probably even more than that that's assuming you know it'd be at, at a thousand bucks if you already had a DSLR you didn't have to you know buy a camera you're just buying you know uh, you know basic GM mount and a basic APO um, so yeah so cost perspective these are gonna be more expensive visual um, I've got this little 5 inch Mac outfitted on a go to mount uh, that's an Alt S, so you can do a German equatorial mount just like this for this um, as well. Um, Alt S works just fine for visual. Um, you could even do just a manual one, you know, if you didn't have too much money. I mean, you could get a pretty decent visual setup for under 500 bucks, really. Um, so these are cheaper to go with. Uh, so the second thing that I kind of touched on is the time aspect. How much time do you have to invest in the, into the hobby? With the visual setup, basically, um, let's say I wanted to take this thing out and just kind of, you know, take a look at the planets or something like that. Like if Jupiter, you know, Saturn's out right now, Mars is out right now. I could take this thing out, um, do like 30 minutes of observing, carry it back inside the house, and I'm ready to, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm back to my normal life. Um, so if that sounds like your typical type of routine to where you're thinking, you know, you might only have like, you know, 30 minutes, an hour to observe here, you've got a family to take care of or whatever. Uh, just, you know, from just ignoring the money aspect, visual might be your way to go. Um, astrophotography, um, assuming you don't have like a permanent observatory set up, you've got to set up your mount, you've got to polar line it, um, 
chances are you're gonna have some kind of weird computer issues that'll come up um, you know there's there could just be a thousand different things that can you know kind of happen to where even if you have like two three hours to do some astrophotography you know by the time you're through your technical issues and you kind of got your gear running perfectly the tracking's going well um, that's assuming that the weather cooperates of course during this whole time um, yeah you, you really need a lot more time just in general to to do this you know versus visual observing um, so anyhow having said that let's kind of just take a quick look at what equipment you need for each and uh, hopefully that'll get you the info that you need to maybe steer you in the, either one direction or the other or maybe you want to do both and that's you know that's perfectly cool um, that's kind of you know the fun part of the hobby um, so yeah let's take a look at uh, what you need for either this or this all right so here's that five inch mac uh so what do you need to do visual observing well it kind of depends on what kind of scope you have uh but um to kind of uh i guess begin you do need a telescope assuming you know you're to that point to where you're past you know just observing with your eyes and with binoculars um so if you have either a refractor which is that type of scope or a um this is a Mac, uh, or uh, if you have an SCT, um, you're going to need a star diagonal. They usually will come with one. Um, it might not be the best of quality one. Uh, you're also going to need a, at least a couple of eyepieces. I do have a pretty good YouTube video on eyepieces. I'll, I'll have that in the link below. Um, and then yeah you're gonna have to have some kind of a mount assuming you do not you know your first telescope is not a daub uh, so again you could do either an Altaz mount like this one that's either go to or manual or you could do a GEM mount um, if you're kind of not sure um, if you want to do astrophotography or visual what I would actually recommend doing is actually probably invest in uh, directly into a GM mount. There's really not too many disadvantages with using one of these visually. Um, and then that way, if you do want to progress to astrophotography, you already have a decent mount. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much all you do need. Um, I mean, depending on the type of scope you get, uh, if it does not come with the finder scope, you will want to get a finder scope. Uh, most telescopes do include that though out of the box. and. You know, there's a there, there's uh, optical ones, red dot ones like my little Mac has, and those are just a personal preference. Until you kind of try them out, uh, you probably won't know which one you prefer. Like I love these red dot ones; uh, they work perfectly for me. Um, aperture wise, if you're doing visual um, for your first telescope, I would probably do at least a five inch telescope or larger. Um, but uh, that's you know that's kind of getting a little bit deeper. Um, I also have a video on selecting um, your first telescope, so I will uh, post a link to that as well uh, for you know kind of more lean towards visual type of stuff. Um, all right, so next up we have astrophotography. Let's see what we need for that. All right, astrophotography. There she is. That's my astrophotography rig currently. Um, although I did just get an FSQ, Takahashi FSQ 106. Um, I have yet to really kind of outfit that then. So this uh, William Optics Lomo is my current astrophotography setup. Um, 80 millimeter APO. You know, we'll start with the scope first. That's probably one of your best bets, especially if you get a triplet. Um, that way you get nice color free stars, uh, very sharp, it's a wide field, tracking is really forgiving on this. Um, you know, this is kind of a deep subject, so I'm not really going to go into like all the details, but an APO that's, you know, something around, you know, like this guy is probably your best bet. Um, uh, also, again, if you're kind of not sure if you want to do visual or astrophotography, an 80 millimeter APO or, you know, somewhere around there is actually pretty good to do visual work with as well. So you could, you know, definitely look at plants with that. It's great for wide field type of work as well. So for looking at like star clusters, uh, big nebulas and that type of deal. 
Uh, so what else do you need? The other really requirement is that you have to have a good tracking mount. Um, you really cannot spend enough on the mount. Um, I mean, a decent mount would be, you know, to start with, would be something like uh, the Celestron AVX mount. I do have a review of that on my website, on my blog. I'll post the link to that. Um, this this mount that I have is a Les Monde G11. I also have a review to that. I'll post the link to that as well. Um, so yeah, I mean, mount wise, you know, basically the better mount that you have, the easier time you're going to have getting good results. That doesn't mean that you can't get good results with a um, kind of more entry level mount, especially with the scope like you know like this. Uh, but it's just easier with the better mount. Uh, they just track better. You're probably going to have less issues and that type of deal. The other thing that you're really going to need is um, a camera, of course. So you could get a dedicated uh, astronomy camera. This is the ASI 294MC Pro that I have. Uh, I got it primarily to do EAA, um, but it works pretty well for astrophotography as well. Um, or if you already have a DSLR, honestly, that's what I'd start with because, you know, you already have it and, you know, yeah, I just start with that and you know when you're ready to progress to a dedicated cooled astronomy camera, you're good to go. Um, you're also going to probably want to uh, do tracking as well. Or uh, when I say tracking, I mean like a guide camera. So I have an off-axis guider. The way that this works is that it'll steal some of the light here from the main camera and shoots it up to the guide camera and that way if there's any tracking errors from the mount this camera will send signals to the computer that will correct them basically so that you know it's not 100 percent necessary but if you want to get good results chances are you probably will have to have that either with an off-axis guider like this or you could get a little guide scope setup um, that will basically do the same thing but you, you'll still need a second camera to do that um, you can do manual focusing. Um, realistically, with how cheap autofocus is these days, uh, like the ZWO EAF uh, autofocuser, um, I think these are like 250 bucks brand new these days. Um, yeah, it just makes your life so much easier. I mean, you just, you know, if you have the right type of astronomy so software, you just hit. Uh, focus a lot of focus for you so yeah that makes it super easy um in the description below i will have uh some links to you know just like a decent like if you just want like a good uh astrophotography setup just something to consider you know as far as the mount and scope um and maybe i'll have a link to a camera as well in there uh, it's kind of a deep topic, so I'm not going to go too deep into it um, as far as, you know, specific equipment recommendations. If you have any questions, please feel free to, uh, you know, shoot me and either leave a response in the video, shoot me an email. Um, I'll be happy to, uh, to answer those, you know, as best as I can. Um, but anyway, yeah, both of these are a fun way to... Um, to enjoy astronomy um you know which which one you would prefer it really depends i mean i've met plenty of people that are you know they think you're you'd be crazy to look through an eyepiece because the images that you'll get uh through you know through an astrophotography rig are just so much better than what you can see visually and even through a much bigger telescope than this um, and you know, I'll, I'll, I'll post a few of the images that I've taken and I'm not that great of astrophotographer. Um, but yeah, there's also crazy people like me that do love visual observing. And even though, you know, most of the time you're seeing just like them fuzzies through, through a visual rig. I mean, to me, it's just like, you know, it's, it's kind of seeing things with your with your own eye that are you know millions and billions of light years away potentially so um yeah like you know there's a certain cool factor to that so i don't think there's any one uh wrong or right way to go uh so whichever you think is good uh that's what i would do i would personally recommend starting with visual because that way you, you get to learn the night sky a little bit 
um, just kind of get familiar with telescopes in general and then migrate to something like this if you know if astrophotography is your true kind of passion um, although with technology these days it is a lot easier to get started with astrophotography um, honestly in a way like I always feel like I'm cheating when I got this rig going because uh, the computer kind of does everything for you like the uh, polar alignment is a lot easier these days the computer kind of does it for you the focusing is done for you automatically I mean if you if you kind of know the basics this thing is really not too hard to get uh, to get going so uh, yeah but that's also probably because I already know how the night sky works because I've been using these guys for years and years and years so um, anyhow yeah let me know if you guys have any questions and I'll see you next time